Hello, and welcome to Infinity TV. I am your host, Chantel, better known as Miss Recycle. Some of you may know me, and some of you may not. I'm here today to talk to you about a very important topic, okay? Um, domestic violence. Are you a victim of domestic violence? I hope not. But if you are, I have a couple of tips for you, okay? So let me just sit on down right here, and we're going to get right to it, all right? Um, the reason why I wanted to bring this or ask you guys this question and bring this to your attention is because domestic violence is a major problem in our community, okay? Um, as African American, excuse me, I, I hate to say that, as women of color, um, indigenous women, we have a tendency of being abused for some reason. Um, too nice, we're too welcoming, we always welcome people into our home, men especially. We welcome these men into our homes, right, that we already have, already established. We're welcoming these men into our homes and they come in and they take over. They take over and if they can't control it, they'll destroy it, all right? So what starts off to be a loving, beautiful relationship turns out to be a disaster if you don't allow these people to control you. So, number one is um, if you are a victim of domestic violence, then nine times out of ten you are dealing with a narcissist, okay? Um, and a narcissist is just basically a very controlling person. They are so controlling to the point that if they can't control you, they will lose control. And that's when they become crazy and that's when they start abusing you, all right? Um, and most narcissists are psychopaths and or sociopaths so we have to be very very careful with that because they are sometimes um tempted to hurt you that's why a lot of these women end up getting killed because they stay in these abusive relationships for so long and the end result is basically death or escape so this is why i'm here talking to you today is because i want to give females and males too because it happens to men too so we don't want to exclude our men because domestic violence happens in all shapes and forms okay with both sides male and female so um and also it comes from it, it can also be attached to being gaslit or gaslighting um some of you may not know what gaslighting is and in a minute i'm going to play something for you a little video um, that will further explain what gaslighting is to give you a better view of what you might be going through because a lot of times we're being gaslit and we don't even know it, okay? But um, what I wanted to do today was just give you guys some tips on what to do and how to um, get out of that type of situation if you are in a domestic violence situation. Um, number one, you need to create an escape plan, all right? Because you have to remember, when you're a victim of domestic violence, nine times out of 10, you've been secluded from your family, you've been excluded from your friends, um, to the point where you're not communicating with anyone and no one really knows what's going on with you. And that's the whole plan, for no one to know what's going on with you, to seclude you so that they can make you feel as though no one loves you, they're the only one who wants you. And in reality, they don't want you, all right? Your peoples love you, but you know, so much has come into play. A lot of times people back up which is not a good thing to do because if you have a relative that you know could possibly be in a domestic violence situation, they're being abused or they're being controlled, and by you not calling them and by you not coming by, checking on them, that's just giving the perpetrator more power, all right? So let's try to keep in touch with our loved ones, call, they're not answering the phone, stop by, drop by. If you gotta bring a couple of friends and family members with you just to do a little wellness, check or whatever um you know just to check on them just to make sure that they're okay then that's what you do all right um another thing is um when you communicate with these people you let them know what's going on and therefore you create an escape plan you have to leave while they're at work if you can um 
you might not want to do it while they're home because it may cause a discrepancy. It, it may cause a problem. You want to try to protect the children and things like that. So, um, you know, one of the ways that I did it, I dropped my kids off at one of my friend's house. I came back home, I packed everything up, and in the midst of that, they popped up. So when they popped up, I popped out, I showed out, I did, I had my mace. So this is one of the things that you will need, okay, to protect yourself. Unfortunately, I had to sleep with this on some occasions, all right, because I was so afraid not knowing what this person was going to do really and it's not a good thing to feel that way in your own home when you feel uncomfortable like that in your own home to where as though you have to start sleeping with weapons under your pillow under your bed and your bra and your something's wrong okay you need to get out of that situation because nine times out of ten if you're feeling uncomfortable your children are feeling uncomfortable too so keep that in mind, all right? We want to try to make sure that these children are protected and they feel as safe as possible. You know, with my situation, I tried to make sure that my children were safe and felt as safe as possible. But still, at the end of the day, when they are in the midst of, you know, witnessing the arguments and, you know, Lord forbid, witnessing the fights, they are still distraught you know they still have um you know some some issues okay they could end up having issues in the future so this is what we want to prevent